When we talk about forces and dynamics, one key thing that comes up is actually the difference between weight and mass. Now I'm not going to go into super detail with this. I'll give you sort of a, yeah, a basic sort of high school definition for this. It's not entirely correct or complete, I should say, but still it works well enough for high school physics. So for example, mass, we could say, um, well, the mass of something is how much stuff there is. Now, from a particle physics point of view, that's not exactly the case, but that's okay. This is good enough, I think. So I think um, what we can do is consider the mass of something is how much stuff there is or how much stuff you're made of. So an example could be maybe your mass, we use M here for mass. Maybe your mass is, oh, I don't know, let's say 78 kilograms. So that could be, for example, someone's mass. If you're American, uh, then maybe you'd say it in pounds. I know in England, uh, I've heard lots of people say, you know, I'm, you know, this many stone. But the typical unit that we use for mass is in kilograms. So that would be the definition of mass. Well, then what's the difference between mass and weight? Well, the weight, um, this is actually, it's a measurement of force. So this brings up something important, okay? Within physics, there's forces. So weight is just a measurement of force. So now, what is a force? Maybe we'd better uh, explain a little bit about that here. So a force. Well, that is, I mean, there's, I'm not going to have a very rigid definition here. There's lots of different ways of defining it. But we could say it's, um, let's say we could say it's the cause of a deformation. So in other words, maybe you cause something to squish. Or it could be seen as, you know, the cause of a velocity change. So it turns out uh, that could also be a definition of force. We're going to define it a few other ways as well. But basically, a force is really like a, well, this is the definition I like best. It's a push. You know, a force is something that sort of, it pushes you, or it pushes something. And I think that's a good way to, to look at what a force is. So weight is a measurement of force. And it turns out we have a, an equation for weight. So I could say that weight is, well, let's see, if we're on Earth. Maybe we'd better define that here. So if I'm sitting on Earth, my weight would just be my mass times gravity. Now, we'd better explain what we mean by gravity here. G is going to be the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. And it's got a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Now, I'm saying on Earth because it really depends, right? You might be somewhere else. Maybe you're on the moon. Well, then G is different for you, which means you have different weight. So, and M is still your, M is your mass. So that would be your mass here. So if you want to find out your weight, just multiply your mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So what this means then is if you're sitting on Earth at least, then the number is roughly 9.81 meters per second squared. I've seen some high school courses where they say, oh, assume it's 10. Well, kind of, yeah, 10 works well enough if you're trying to estimate it, sure. I mean, that'll, that'll work well enough. So then the question might be then, uh, well, you know, I'm often asked at least, you know, what's your weight? And now this, this is an example of where physics, you know, if you're being a really sort of complete, uh, you know, physics definition, doesn't really work so much in the real world. Because if someone says, what's your weight? Well, then I could say, well, my weight, let's see, if I had a mass of 78 kilos, well, I could say then that, let's say it's 78 kilograms. And I could say times uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. Now it turns out that gives me, what would that be, around, around 765 newtons. So I could say, okay, um, my weight is actually around 765 newtons. And you might wonder, well, why in the world would we say the word, uh, you know, weight then? Because usually if someone in the everyday world is asking you, you know, what's your weight or how much do you weigh? They normally mean, you know, how many pounds or kilograms are you? So I think at least if someone asks me how much I weigh, I don't try to uh, 
I don't try to correct them and say, well, you know, um, it's not actually my weight, it's my mass that you're asking for. My weight is actually 765 newtons. Let's assume I'm, you know, with this mass here. It's maybe a good way to uh, get teased or maybe get a wedgie or something like that. But um, if you're actually asked by someone what your weight is, they normally mean what's your mass. But from a strictly physics point of view, we have a difference. We have the word mass and the word weight, and they are not the same. Okay, so weight versus mass, they're not the same. Mass is how much stuff there is. Weight is a measurement of force. Now, um, I've alluded to this right here, a force here, F. That's a force. And it's measured in newtons. Because this here is a unit of force. It's a newton. But you can see that there's an alternate unit of force. If you look at this, it's also, see, one newton is also equal to kilogram times meters per second squared. So that's also a unit of force. Now force is just a push. Or, you know, so, yeah, that's maybe a good way to look at it. It's just a push. You could see it as it's something that causes a velocity change. Because on Earth, for example, gravity is always acting on me. See, I'm always feeling this acceleration due to gravity. And it turns out then that means that I cause, you know, or sorry, that force causes me to have a velocity change. So the force of gravity causes this. We could also say it's a cause of a deformation. There's a lot of different ways of looking at the word force. So now I've got a question for you. And it is this. In zero gravity, are you weightless or are you massless? And uh, to illustrate this a little bit, at least, well, just for fun, at least, I've got a couple YouTube videos here. Let me just see if I can load one up. Yeah, this is one from a BBC series. It's a really good series. You should definitely check it out. It's called The Wonders of the Universe. There's lots of different videos. And this uh, Brian Cox, he's really, really good at explaining things. So in this video, he's actually in this uh, plane. Um, it's one of these planes that flies a parabolic arch. So what I mean, or arc. So what I mean by that is that in the plane, let's just say we're looking at uh, an example here. So let's say the plane, it's going to actually fly. This is a side view of the plane. Maybe this here's the plane right here. There it is, it's got little wings here. You can see why I didn't uh, get asked to go to art school, but this is your little plane. And it turns out if you fly up, and then what you do is you actually go in a parabolic arc. In other words, you go like this right here. During this time, roughly from here to here, you might feel, well, if you happen to fall, in, in other words, if you happen to have your plane go down um, at a certain way, then you can actually simulate uh, what we call zero gravity. Now, does that mean that you're actually feeling zero gravity? No, you're still feeling gravity. But the way to sort of cheat or sort of trick is that if you fall with the plane at the same rate as the plane is falling, then it's, it's kind of like it cancels out gravity. Not exactly, but you basically, you essentially feel no gravity. So here is Brian Cox right here. And what he's doing is he's, well, I guess he's playing around with water in zero gravity for a little while, and someone here, she's trying to eat things. You can see things just float around. Now, um, people who fly in these planes, uh, they've actually nicknamed this the Vomit Comet. And that's because a lot of people, when they're in these planes like this, your stomach actually doesn't like this feeling. I mean, imagine if you're in a roller coaster, you basically go down like this. Now, can you keep going down like this forever? Well, no, because eventually you'd crash into the ground. So, of course, when they do these arcs, what they have to do then is, of course, everybody, you know, gets totally squished as they go back up again, and they do another arc to feel zero gravity again for some seconds. So you can do that in a big plane. You can actually do that in a small plane. Um, I've got this video right here. I think it's really funny here. So we've got a little uh, dog right here in zero gravity. So it's the same sort of thing happening where two uh, guys are flying in a uh, little Cessna plane, I would imagine. Um, now, I've done actually this experiment, well, not with a dog, but uh, it was actually one of my first dates with my wife. So I took her flying in a plane very, very similar to this. So I'm flying here, she's here. And I remember asking her, you know, hey, do you want to experience uh, zero gravity? And of course, she was a good sport about it. She said, yeah, sure. So I held in my hands a pair of keys, or a set of keys. What I did then is I did the same sort of arc here. So I had the plane go up, and then after that I pulled down really, really hard. Now your stomach doesn't like this part right here, so some people feel like throwing up. So I warned her, I said, well, tighten your stomach muscles uh, while we do this. And the keys actually float in the air just like zero gravity. Well here, uh, watch carefully, there's a little dog in the back right here. So as they do this right here, the poor little dog is probably wondering what's going on. Everything goes sort of flying there. So, I mean, that's another example. I mean, you can do zero gravity with just about anything. 
Now, of course, uh, you can experience this if you're out in orbit as well. Um, so this can also happen. But now the question is, in zero gravity, are you weightless or are you massless? Well, if we go back to the definition of mass, mass is how much stuff there is. So d if you're in zero gravity, does that mean that you feel uh, or you have no mass? No, not at all. So in this case right here, then we could say, well, you're, you're not massless. Okay, you can't be massless because you still have stuff. You're still made of stuff. I mean, you don't stop existing if you're feeling what we call zero gravity. So you're not massless. That means you must be weightless. So you are weightless. And the reason you're weightless, the reason that you might be weightless is because, well, although you still have mass, it's like you feel, you know, as if there's no acceleration due to gravity. Now, when I say zero gravity, be very careful here. I mean, here we're, we're trying to simulate it. Turns out you're still falling. So you're still feeling gravity. So th this word is a little bit um, incorrect, or at least a little bit misleading. Because it turns out if, I mean, you're still near the Earth, right? I mean, the Earth here is still exerting a force. It's exerting a force on this. It's exerting a force on you when you're here. It's exerting a force when you're here. It's exerting a force when you're here. So it's not that gravity stops acting on you. It's just that you happen to fall at the same speed as the plane does. So you simulate as if you're in outer space. You know, maybe let's say uh, you're really, really far in outer space. Let's say like in, I don't know, really far away from the sun. Well, then you could say that you're, you know, sort of like in zero gravity. But this word right here, you never technically feel zero gravitational force. So that's why I just want to be careful with this word, zero gravity. But if we say, you know, sort of zero G like this, well, we could say, well, you're weightless. And that's because, well, it's like you, f it's like there's no gravity on you, even though there actually is. Remember, there actually is still gravity acting on you. This is a force due to gravity going down always. It's always acting on you. But you could say you're sort of weightless here. So that's at least just a simple definition right here that we can look at. Now in the uh, following videos, I'm going to show you all sorts of things about forces and Newton's laws. So we're going to go into this into more detail and actually quantify these things.